morning. Good morning, Jody. Sorry, morning. I'm uh, <laughs> trying to hang up a phone call with uh, with Sunrun. We're trying. We're working on a PV transfer, and they they've been pretty difficult to work with. Um, how how's everyone? How's everything going? Good. good very good okay so i wanted to go over just like the ballpark you know interest rates that we are at um so from a va perspective we're oh sorry let me just switch screens Okay, um, we did pick up an option for a lower FICO, like a 600, we're doing a 600 FICO score uh, for a VA. So before we, we couldn't really do it, now we can. We also have for a 620 FICO score, VA alone, and it's a manual approval versus a automated approval. Can anyone share on the difference of manual versus automated? I'm going to guess manual is you're inputting it yourself information into the system. So good guess. Um, what, what it is, is the when we run an approval, there we run it through an automated underwriting engine. And the, the result that we want to get is always approve eligible. That's the finding. We call it the finding. The... The, if we get approved eligible, then we pretty much know we can follow whatever the underwriting results say. So if the underwriting results say that we can qualify them up to a 65% debt to income ratio, then we can. And oftentimes we are. Um, in, a, in a manual, if, if the finding, the underwriting finding does not say approved eligible, if it says manual refer slash eligible. That means like, okay, these guys are on the fence. They could be eligible, but we're gonna need a human being <laughs> underwriter to look at everything, to look at the bank statement balances, to look at um, the actual income documentation and stuff like that. So before, in order for us to do a manual, we needed a 680 or above, a 680 FICO score. But what do you guys think most of the manual approval FICO score people were? Under. Under. Below. Yeah. Right. There's a reason. There's a reason they're a manual approval versus uh, automated. Yes, approve eligible. So now we do have an, an avenue, which I trust, um, which can go as low as a 620 FICO score and still be able to complete the manual approval. There are still debt to income ratio guidelines and requirements that have to be met, but at least now we don't have to turn, like there are um, people that we've had to say, like, we can't do it. And I know that they've been able to go elsewhere and close, albeit a much higher interest rate and a, a much lower price point. But still, you know, ultimately, they were able to get something, get their foot, you know, close on a transaction, where with us, we weren't um, comfortable yet to, to offer a product like that. So now 600, as low as 600 FICO score for an approved eligible and as low as 620 for a uh, refer eligible or a manual approval. 
Um, now, just to go back to the interest rates, we're looking at about a 4.5 at zero points for VA. So um, it kind of, it improved a little. It was, it, it worsened on basically Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week. It worsened yesterday and then it improved today a little bit. So, and then like, let's say we're talking to a borrower who needs us to cover all their closing costs. Now, this is where there, we really start to feel the difference, um, but we're talking about somewhere between a 5.125 and a... Hi, Roxy! <laughs> I'll put her down My until we're goodness, done. goodness, look at that face and those ears. It's your sister! It's so cute! Oh gosh, she's such a baby! It's your sister! Oh, bow tie? It's your sister! It's like, who are all these people? <laughs> This is like, this is Lee's first huddle too. Like we just take her to the huddle with our dogs. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Oh my okay. God. Well, whose, dog, whose dog is that, Laura? Mine. <laughs> this, yours too. Is, this is a permanent member of Team Fleming. Lola is still a member of Team Fleming, but oh, yeah, uh -huh. she, yeah. Look at her little face. <laughs> I can't take it. So oh my see how big Lola looks. Oh look at my god. Look at, yeah, look at how big Lola looks real quick, Paul. Hold her up. Jay. She did get bigger, but she's still yeah. so small. Let me look at her. Look. Look. Oh. I know. Isn't she so cute? So cute. <laughs> look at this little baby. Oh it's my god. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to business. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, Anyways, um, okay, so when we have a buyer, it's it's tough in this market, but I have we have like three of them right now where we're they got accepted with zero down, there's no appraisal clause, and we the lender are covering all closing costs. So these people have little to no money as a VA buyer, and we're covering all closing costs. But anyways. Just to give you the range, we're looking at about a 5.125 to upwards of a 5.375. If, if it was a really small loan amount, like if they were buying, you know, a, a $350,000 one bedroom or something like that, for us to be able to cover all closing costs, it's like a 5.375, 5.5%, which I know sounds crazy, but it's, again, in the grand scheme of things, in, in a you know, 40 year look back, it's not crazy, but yes, for some of our buyers that are like 30, it's like, well, it's crazy <laughs> for them. Um, so that's where we are from a VA perspective, from an FA, oh no, from a conventional perspective, we are, let me just switch back to that one. And everything is not always about rate as you guys know but i still want to give you guys the ballparks um so from a conventional perspective we're looking at It's computing. Oh, here it is. At zero points, we're looking at about a 5.375. If it was a condo, 5.5. So um, if they're a first time home buyer and they're gonna do our home buyer certification, it's gonna be a little bit better. It'll be more like a 5.125. So that's the home ready program, which we've been talking a lot about. Um, another thing we're looking into, which again, when, you know, when the market, we're not going to call it, we're not going to call it a recession, but when things start to slow down, we have to be a positive B, you got to do the D, the D. The DSA, the daily success activities, you have to commit to those and you have to do the work. I'm period. Like, that's just it. You have to get on the phone. You have to do your follow up touches even more than usual. And you're going to have some time to do things that maybe you weren't doing. So, for instance, 
we are looking into this um this fund which is it's a tribal fund it's kind of cool but it's a tribal fund and they give up to five percent down payment assistance and supposedly the way that they're marketing it is that it's a Fannie Mae approved program. So if it's a Fannie Mae approved program, then someone could effectively actually have no money, use this as their 5% down, and then be able to do a 5% down 95% loan from us, from, from us. Um, I just, we just started the research on this program. It's the Chinoa Fund is what it's called, but basically it is, I just need to, I'm, I'm concerned about some sort of a clawback or some sort of shared appreciation or something like that, where it's like, yeah, we're gonna give you 5%, but you, when you sell, you're gonna have to give us 5% of not just what we gave you, but of the, the new value of the property. So that would be some sort of shared appreciation, which, it can get that can get risky um or if there's some sort of a clawback in terms of like if you don't pay pay us back by this time period then you're going to owe us this much or then we get your house or something crazy like that um so that's kind of a cool first time home buyer down payment assistance program that we are currently researching um and then that's the, that's the rate. So just for whatever time we have left, I just want to open up the floor to questions or comments. Um, yes, I have one. Are people still assuming VA loans? Um, we, yep, we were very fortunate. We have an excellent rate from two years ago. So, uh, and the rates have over doubled since then. And so I'm curious to know whether that's something that you as a lender are still able to facilitate on VA loans? So we facilitate them, but the way that it actually works mm -hmm. is that we, you have to go to the current servicer or the current mortgage person that you're paying. So if you're, if we close the loan and the loan got transferred to Loan Depot host, Loan Depot servicing. Right. We'll, we're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to disappear because obviously it's our, it, it's our buyer that's now a seller, right? So they, they are going to want help. Um, but we would help with communication to whoever is servicing the loan, which will definitely not be us. Um, well, not definitely, because if it's, if we did it in-house for some reason, we closed it with our direct funding source, which is ICM for some reason, then it would be us. But for the most part, 90% of, of our loans that we're doing are going to be brokered. So we would communicate with them. We would explain, this is the, um, buyer we'll here, we'll facilitate, here's the 1003 or the application. Here's the income docs. Here's the assets. They totally qualify. And basically there's a half a percent funding fee charged um but the big kicker is that let's say your balance is 500 and you're selling for 600 the buyer has to be able to come up with that money they can't they can't finance it even though it's their right to finance it because they get zero down Yes, you do get zero down if you do your own new VA loan at prevailing market interest rates. If you want to take over this amazing 2.25%, then you have to work within the, the balance, the current loan balance, and you have to cover that premium or mm -hmm. the appreciation that occurred between right. when it was bought and current market. Yeah, so, so they would need to strategize with you as their lender as to what that could look like. Maybe it's a second mortgage at the higher interest rate, which it seems that they're still going to be saving money on interest and monthly payments by doing that. So it sounds like it's a little bit more complicated, but entirely doable. So maybe mindful for some buyer's agents to note when the property that your clients are offering on was purchased, if it was a 2020 VA loan there's the possibility that that could 
be an opportunity. And like Jody is, is illustrating, there's a lot of things that go along with that, a lot of things that have to happen. Um, but she's the expert and she'll really be able to give you the guidance on whether or not that's doable for your clients. So check into that. I'm telling you those 2020 interest rates on VA loans were killer. So cool. Interesting. Good insight today. Do you guys have any uh, final questions for Jody? I do uh, ha have one question. It's not about VA loan though, but it just kind of got brought up the other day and I figured I'd ask you since you're on here. Um, so I've been working with a couple doctors um, and they asked, they're on the main line right now, but they were asking me if you do, if we have any special programs, I think in Florida or the mainland, they offer like special rates or programs for doctors, like for physicians. Yeah, so we are, our rates are usually a lot better than any of the physicians programs that are out there. So okay. in terms of rate, that's not going to be a problem. We're way sharper. Okay. The problem is if they're making, you know, 95,000 this year, but next year they're going to be making 350,000. Like, the, some of the very unique physician loans, if they don't qualify for what they want, um, they have some sort of a, like, we're going to look the other way and we're going to qualify you for more than you can actually qualify for, knowing that next year or the year after, That'd you're going to be doubling or tripling your income. Oh, wow. So um, we... I'll actually, that's one that I'm going to look for. We currently don't have anything, uh, anything like that. And okay. as far as all of my broker sources, which, you know, our broker sources are the best, but there are some outside of the box type of broker sources that we've recently hooked up with. So it's, it's worth me asking, like, is, is there something? Okay. That's good to know. I mean, he was going to probably use his own lender in the mainland, but I did let him know, you know, let him know that you're looking to purchase in Hawaii that way, you know, to make sure they're licensed to do business here. And he's like, okay. Um, but he may be open to meeting with a local lender if not, or just maybe open in general to getting that. But he, that was one of his questions. I'm like, you know what? I really don't know. So I want to tell you yes or no. I'll make sure and, you know, I'll ask and, um, you know, that way my agent could have more information or that they, he asks again when she meets with him over Zoom, we could have some more information to go off of. Yeah, and honestly, them. if he's like a doctor that's transferring here mm -hmm. that is already making money, like we work with doctors all the time. And they, I told him that too. Yeah, they prefer okay. to go with our rate versus a physician's loan because they're not in that unique baby doctor situation <laughs> where they actually need it so why would you go with that if you know if you don't need it and you can actually get a better interest rate okay so, i think he'll probably want that anyways versus like a special or preferred like physician's rate but he's also going to be moving his practice here and he will be needing like commercial that's like separate but hopefully maybe you could help them with that too when the time comes yeah yeah we can do commercial okay Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Great question this morning, Lori. All right, everybody. Well, we're about four minutes over. So thank you for hanging out with us. We do want to acknowledge somebody super special on today's huddle. Yes, Roxy and Lola and Jody, but also <laughs> Lee, Lee Williams, who is not only our, yes, our fire agent. She is also a client of Team Lally. Her uh, buyer specialist was Olivia. And she and her husband, Trey, and their beautiful family uh, moved to Honolulu and bought a home with Team Lally. And now she is going to be serving clients throughout Oahu. Lee, do you want to hop off mute and say hi and just kind of introduce yourself to the team? Good morning. Yay. And by the Good way, she, she knows Good morning. She because Jody and Pac Rim was their lender too. So... Yeah, great connective tissue, but so glad to have you. So tell us, um, well, just introduce yourself. All right, my name is Lee and I am from Texas originally. Um, my husband did 20 years in the Navy as a, a, a Navy diver and he's now assistant pastor at Hui Kala Baptist Church here in Honolulu. And we have three daughters and our youngest one is about to graduate from high school in a few weeks, so. Yeah. Was it Navy That's Seal? awesome. He was a diver. It's, a, it's just a different, different section. Okay. Yeah. 
men in Navy SEAL before they're pretty crazy guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's kind of crazy too, but. <laughs> well, Lee, right, we're welcome. so glad to have you. And welcome to the team. Yay. We're just finishing up with her onboarding and she's going to start her training and everything this week. So um, when you see her around, you know, make sure you say hi and uh, she'll be shadowing several of you as part of her training. So really looking forward to helping you guys get her integrated and give her all the tips and tricks and resources that, uh, that new agents need. Thank you. Very good. Lee, can you hang on for a quick minute along with Lori, Joey, Shane, and Jody? Cause I got to show you, um, Roxy. Um, 